It's a moment that raised eyebrows and frankly new questions about the president's priorities. President Trump meeting with the Russian leader Vladimir Putin. This was happening in Osaka in Japan, the G20 summit. He flat out joked about the Russian attacks on the U.S. elections. Laughing it off. Joining us now from the G20 Summit in Japan, Jim Shudo, CNN's chief national security correspondent, anchor of CNN Newsroom, and Caitlin Collins, CNN White House correspondent. Jim, he laughed it off. Again, a year after Helsinki, when the president took the Russian side in terms of what intelligence he believed, he's now laughing off the Russian attacks on U.S. elections. What did you see there? And you know what was striking too, John? They were sharing a joke. The president laughed it off and smiled, and Vladimir Putin was smiling there with him. So the man who U.S. intelligence has assessed directed interference in U.S. election in 2016, but not just 2016, 2018, they expect again, again in 2020, smiling along with the sitting U.S. president, who has commander-in-chief, whose job it is to protect U.S. elections. It's a remarkable moment. And as you note, John, it was an opportunity, 11 months after that infamous moment in Helsinki where the president took the Russian president's side on Russian election interference, he had an opportunity to steadfastly say, I will not stand for this, my country will not stand for this, and he did not. He made a joke of it. And we know from the White House's own readout of their private meeting that this, this issue was not discussed, at least it was not on the list of issues the White House listed. Uh, they listed Iran, Syria, Ukraine, Venezuela, but not election meddling. And John, we just noticed in the last few moments here that in the UK Prime, Minister meet, Prime Minister's meeting with the Russian President, Theresa May, she condemned Russia's destabilizing interference, misinformation in Europe. Why can the British Prime Minister mm -hmm so definitively call out the Russian president in those direct terms, but the president repeatedly, whether here, Helsinki, Vietnam, Hamburg, Germany, all their meetings, has not. Mm -hmm. it's, just a, it's just a remarkable omission. Yeah, this is according to 10 Downing Street. Uh, British Prime Minister Theresa May told Vladimir Putin there cannot be a normalization of our bilateral relationship until Russia stops the irresponsible and destabilizing activity that threatens the U.K. and its allies. Caitlin, that's another way... To, to tell Vladimir Putin to stop attacking the election system. That's the way the British decided to do it. The president made a joke of it. Is anyone inside the White House, does anyone on the inside say, we wish he would handle this differently? Certainly. There are a lot of people who say they go out of their way to avoid talking about Russia with the president because it's such such a sensitive issue because essentially how the president views it is a direct attack on the fact that he was elected and his legitimacy as a president. So that's why you see this. What you saw today where the president seemed to be making a joke of a reporter asking the president, will you tell him not to meddle in 2020, is just another step in this pattern of annoyance that you seem to see from the president because he is repeatedly asked every Every time Vladimir Putin is brought up, whether or not he's going to also bring up election meddling. Now, we should note that Rex Tillerson, did, the former Secretary of State, did this interview with House Democrats. And according to the transcript, he says that he does know that the president brought up election meddling with Vladimir Putin before. But what we've seen, John, after that emerge is the president cite these denials from Vladimir Putin, where he says that they didn't do it. And at one time, uh, Putin told the president that if they did do it, they would be so good that the United States would not know about it. And the president cited that as something that was potentially real. So what you see is essentially the president weighing Vladimir Putin's word against the weight of the United States intelligence community and repeatedly taking Vladimir Putin's word over it. But what it fits into is the president gets annoyed because he feels like this is something that is a wedge in his relationship with Vladimir Putin that is a simply, in his mind, an unnecessary question. Right. I mean, it, it, it's a question that deals with U.S. national security. Uh, and you would think that as president, it would be something he would want to address, whatever his personal feelings are. Jim, it's interesting. You said that President Trump shared a joke with Vladimir Putin. That was about election security. He also seemed to share a joke about the idea of journalism and freedom of the press. Um, Jennifer Jacobs, a Bloomberg reporter, said uh, President Trump also bonded with Putin over a scorn for journalists. Get rid of them. Fake news is a great term, isn't it? You don't have this problem in Russia, but we do. We also have Putin answered in English. Yeah. It's the same. They share a chuckle. Journalists are killed in Russia, Jim. Yeah. Well, they're shot. 
numerous cases. They are literally thrown out of windows. Just in the last two weeks, a Russian investigative journalist was jailed on what were later determined to be fake charges. There are a lot of other Russian uh, journalists, not to mention dissidents and others, who, who are in Russian jails. That's how Russia gets rid of journalists. It, it, it's well documented. It, it's not just an inappropriate joke for a U.S. president to make. It, it's, it's frankly disturbing, and it, and it shows why the president's frequent attacks on, on journalists and media here uh, matter, right, because uh, our, our adversaries take those words seriously, and, and, and there may even be people inside this country who take those words and those threats seriously. Uh, it, you know, why can this president uh, take, give strong words to U.S. allies, the mayor of London, uh, NATO allies, etc., but does not call out a Kim or a Putin or an MBS, right, the Saudi crown prince, for, for their many clear human rights violations, including those relating to journalists? I, it, it's just, it's mind-boggling.